Hey everyone and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. So this is going to be a really quick introduction to my spoiler filled reading vlog for both Jade War and Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. So these are books two and three in the Greenbone saga and I have been so excited to finish this series because Jade War was one of my favourite books of last year and I was meant to read Jade War. I think I had plans to read it in December but then I just didn't <laughs> and it's got to a point now where I am just scared of finishing this series because everyone I know who's read this series has said that it's incredible <laughs> and I've seen so many people say that they cried at both of these books and I mean I love it when a book has that emotional impact on me but also it's a little bit intimidating I'm not gonna lie <laughs> as I said this vlog is gonna contain spoilers for both Jade War, Jade Legacy and also Jade City so if you haven't read this series then you might not want to watch this vlog but if you have read it and you're interested in seeing my thoughts and my reactions as I go then keep watching because I have a feeling that things are about to get emotional. <laughs> So I am now 50 pages into Jade War and I wanted to do a very, very quick update with some initial thoughts, even though I don't really have many thoughts so far because not a lot has really happened. <laughs> I think that this book, the start of this book, picks up around a year or so after the end of Jade City. But I am glad that it's felt quite easy to get back into this world because I was a little bit nervous. <laughs> It's been, I think, six months since I read Jade City and I was worried that I would have forgotten all of the terminology, but thankfully there is also a character list at the start of the book, which I have needed a few times because, yeah, there's been a few moments where I've come across a character and I've thought I definitely know who this person is, but it's just gone <laughs> from my brain. So, yeah, thankfully it has been quite easy to get back into this. I'm trying to work out what direction this book is going to go in because I'm sure from the reviews that I've seen people talk about how the world opens up a lot in this and I am getting that feeling because I know that Andon is being sent away to a different country so maybe we're going to see something happening there. I'm sure I've also heard as well that there's some sort of conflict between people who want to stick to the traditional ways of training to be able to use jade but then there's also people who think what's the point when you've got this substance called shine that can allow people to use jade without having the training and it won't mean that they get addicted. It feels like there's been a few new characters introduced in this or a few new perspectives, more perspectives than the first book or what I remember there being in the first book and occasionally I've found that my attention is wavering a little bit because I do only really care about the main characters but I understand understand that we need the side characters to give more of a perspective on certain situations. You know what's really funny is that when I got to the part in Jade City where Lan died, I can remember thinking, but what about that letter that he got from his ex? Because he never opened it before he died and we never actually found out what was in that letter, but we have now found out that Lan actually has a son and that's why his ex was writing to him. I do like that. I like that it feels as if Fonda Lee has a plan for this series and it's been quite well plotted. It also seems like Wen is pregnant and so Hilo is about to become a dad as well. Is it Hilo or Hilo? I am so bad at pronouncing names. <laughs> also I'm using the bookmarks that came with my Lumicrate box and I think this one is probably my favourite. I'm pretty sure this is Hilo. Like I said, I'm terrible at pronouncing names. <laughs> hey everyone, so I am now about 200 pages into Jade War and I don't know if I've done a very good job so far of explaining what the plot for this book is, but then I was thinking if you're watching this video then you probably already know <laughs> because this is obviously a spoilery vlog, but I thought I would just summarise where I'm at and what's been happening. So the start of this book opens up with the Torch of Kekons 
at funerals, so Shay, Lan, and Hilo's grandfather. I was wondering whether he died at the end of the first book, and I just completely forgot about it, but no, he must have died in between the first and second book. But after the funeral, Hilo turns to Andon and says that because he refuses to wear jade, he has to go away to Espenia, where he's currently living with this Kekanese family, and there's a whole community there that he's sort of getting to know. There was this incident where he accidentally stole someone's bicycle, and it was this whole misunderstanding, but apparently the guy that he ended up fighting is some kind of local gangster. So now I'm really worried that something is going to happen to Andon, and I don't want anything to happen to him, because he is precious, and I love him. <laughs> Shay has started dating this guy who I think works at the university, and he has family who live in Shatar, and I think that that's one of the countries that's involved in this war. Hilo then travelled to Steppenland, I think is the name of the country, to see Lan's ex and Lan's son, and oh my god, he killed her! What? What? <laughs> my reaction when I was reading that last night was what? <laughs> what is going on? I don't know whether I should have been shocked that he went there, but I wasn't expecting it, and now I'm starting to wonder whether he's going to become more of a morally grey character, because I feel like he is quite morally grey anyway. I mean, clearly after what just happened. <laughs> I always thought, actually, that Hilo was the most interesting character within this series. In the first book, when he was the horn, he was so clearly perfect for that that role, and then when Lan died, he had to step up and become the pillar, which is so out of his comfort zone, and I found it really interesting seeing his thought processes and seeing the decisions that he was making. I think it's Espenia who have actually now banned civilians from carrying jade, and it looks like the other countries outside of Kekon might also be going in that direction, and so I'm wondering whether the Greenbones are actually going to become the villains within the story. I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen next. I just love, actually, that it's so unpredictable. I've just got to the part now where the Mountain have launched this smear campaign against Shay to try and get her to resign as weatherman, and Shay has just challenged eight the pillar to a duel, and I am nervous. I always get so scared when the characters are put in these positions where something could happen to them, because I know that Fonda Lee is not scared to kill off characters, and I like all the characters, and I don't want any of them to die. <laughs> so if my voice sounds a little bit croaky in this clip, it's because I went out on Friday night, and last night actually, but I went out on Friday night and somehow agreed to do karaoke, which always seems like a good idea at the time, until two days later and your voice is still gone. <laughs> but I, yeah, haven't been reading, much for the last few days, obviously, because I've been out, but I only have, I think, about 170 pages left to go of Jade War, and oh my gosh, the tension is a lot. <laughs> Hilo has just travelled to Spenia to see Andon and the Kekanese community over there, because they've been having some problems with the local clans, and Hilo has agreed to start smuggling Jade into Spenia to sell to these clans. And I think the reasoning behind it does make sense, but also I don't trust them like these other clans. There's been a lot of discussion in this book around the way the other countries view the Kekanese, and especially the way that they view Greenbones, and how everyone assumes that they're just thugs. This has felt like quite a slow burn, I would say, but it's not like in a boring way, because I do really, really love the characters. I also quite like as well the way that the timeline in this, every so often it will skip ahead a few days or even a few months, and I like that. It doesn't feel like it's rushed or that we're skipping anything important. It feels like just a natural progression and that we're just skimming past all of the kind of 
boring day-to-day -day stuff, but when it actually matters, we're focusing in on it. And I like that. I do think that it is well paced and I don't feel like I'm missing anything because obviously we got to know the characters quite well in the first book. And so, yeah, I don't mind the way that the timeline in this does every so often skip ahead quite a bit. Really excited to finish this and I am so nervous for Jade Legacy because that book is chunky and I just, I don't want this series to end because I've been enjoying it so much. Does anyone else feel like that? Where if you're really, really enjoying in a series you don't want to finish it because you can never read it again for the first time yeah i just love it so much <laughs> hi friends <laughs> so i haven't filmed in a while i think actually the last update that i did for this vlog i did mention that i wasn't feeling very well and i had a bit of a sore throat well it turns out that i had covid <laughs> so i spent the first half this week feeling very sorry for myself and i still don't feel great it's now friday but yeah i wasn't really in the mood to read earlier on in the week because my brain was just refusing to concentrate on anything. However, I can now confirm that I have finished Jade War by Fonda Lee and I'm kind of upset about this vlog because I wanted to be doing reaction clips of me reading the end of this because oh my goodness, the end of this was so intense. But obviously I didn't want to be on camera <laughs> this week because I mean, I still don't look great, but I looked even worse earlier this week. But like I said, I loved the ending to this. And throughout this whole book, I had this horrible sinking feeling in my stomach that something was going to happen to either Ren or Anden. And so you can imagine <laughs> my face towards the end of this book, because there were so many moments where I was like, oh my gosh, no, 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 no. It's actually going to happen. It's actually going to happen. They're going to die. And I'm obviously glad that they didn't die. But yeah, it, it, it was a lot and it was, I, I struggled <laughs> throughout the end of this, not in a bad way, but just in an emotional way. <laughs> I think because I was reading this so quickly towards the end, I didn't cry because when I thought that Ren had died, I could feel myself starting to tear up. But then I read a few more pages and Andon brought her back to life and I thought, okay, it's fine. I can relax. I think if I'd read this a little slower, then maybe I would have cried. Is that? dog outside my house. I'm really sorry. I think if I'd read this less quickly then maybe I would have cried but yeah 4.5 stars. I'm so excited for Jade Legacy because I mean someone's gonna die aren't they? Whenever someone says that a book emotionally destroyed them I always assume that that means that someone died or some people died even though I know that when I read books yes I do cry if my favourite characters are killed off but I also cry at other stuff actually probably more for example i cry a lot of romance books because they are quite emotionally intense and sometimes yeah i just i don't know i get attached to characters and so when they go through emotions that brings out emotion in me does that make any sense you can tell that my brain is just not quite functioning yet but like i said 4.5 stars and i have now started Jade Legacy. I'm literally only two chapters in. I read the first two chapters last night. I think it's going to be really interesting with this book to see what direction it goes in. And we've already seen how Hilo is struggling a lot at the moment with these very complicated feelings towards Wen because he thinks that she betrayed him, but also he still cares about her. And it's just so well written. I just love the way that Fonda Lee writes these characters and how she writes these emotions and these very, very uh, complex relationships. I'm also really interested to see uh, the children of this family grow up and what their relationships are going to be like because we learned at the end of Jade War that Rue is a stone eye like his mother and so I'm wondering how that's going to come into the plot. There's also this anti-clan alliance that has cropped up which is led by Barrow who was one of the side characters from the first two books and I was wondering how his storyline was going to weave into the bigger plot. I found his chapters a little bit boring in the first two books, but I don't know, it's starting to capture my interest again, and I am excited to carry on reading this. <laughs>
So I wanted to film an update for this vlog because I haven't filmed one in a while but I'm really struggling to think of other stuff that I can say about this book and about this series that I haven't said already. Can't wait until I finish this series and I can google how to pronounce the names of all the characters because it is frustrating me that I feel like I'm pronouncing them wrong but I don't want to google yet because I don't want to accidentally spoil myself just in case any of the characters are dead. <laughs> I don't think I've actually talked much yet about Wen and Hilo's relationship and how much I appreciate the effort that Fonda Lee has put into crafting these characters and building this relationship over the course of the books because obviously in the first book they're just dating and then in the second book you see them when they've been married for a few years and they start having children and then in this book you see them when they've been married for many many years and it's a very established relationship. It feels very realistic because you experience all of their ups and downs and the way that the characters act at times does feel frustrating. Like for example at the start of this book the way that Hilo treats Wen. Even though I didn't like the way that he was treating her I did think that it made sense for his character that he would act that way. I have to say I did feel like the relationship between Shay and Woon seemed to come a little bit out of nowhere. I don't know whether it was just because I wasn't paying as much attention to them in the second book. That would be probably my own a little critique at the moment but it's not going to affect my overall enjoyment because I'm not reading this for the romance even though I do appreciate the relationships in this. That was a very rambly update, I am so sorry. <laughs> so I don't know if I've understood this right but I'm on page 270 and I think that Hilo has died? I don't know if I've understood that right but there was this huge explosion at this meeting and the building collapsed and I think that Hilo has just died. Okay so he's not dead <laughs> which is good but also I'm a little bit annoyed <laughs> at Fonda Lee for doing that to my emotions because that was not fun. <laughs> so I am now over halfway through Jade Legacy. I'm on page 394 and I thought I would have a bit of a chat about what direction I think this book is going to go in because I'm getting the feeling that this second half is going to focus more on the next generation, so Nico and Rue and Jaya I think is the name of the youngest. Can't remember the name of Shay's daughter as well but I think that this second half is going to focus more on Nico and Rue in particular because we've just heard, we've just found out that Nico has joined the GSI I think is what it's called, the organisation that's run by Jim Sunto. I was initially wondering whether Shay was going to end up regretting saving a Madashi during the bombings but I don't think that that's going to happen. I think that the two clans are eventually going to form some sort of peace treaty and they're going to come together because they are already working together to get rid of the clanless future movement, the anti-clan alliance. It's also been implied that Nico isn't the biggest fan of the clans and especially the way that they go about things and so I'm wondering whether that's what's going to happen eventually is the things are going to change because of the way that this book is told and how every so often it jumps ahead in time and we have covered many years in this book so far so I think that by the time this book ends we're going to be way 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 in the future where we're going to see that huge progression from the first book to the way that things are going to end. I don't know if what I've said makes sense but that is what I am loving about this series is that the way that the world is now is very different to how it was in Jade City and it's quite interesting seeing certain events that happened in the previous two books referred to in this book as being like historical events. It's just really clever I think the way that it's been structured. I can see why some people might not like the way that the timeline in this progresses but I really like it. There's something dodgy going 
going on though with the Aspenians, I think that that is going to come into it eventually, is that we're going to see some kind of, I don't know, betrayal of some kind, maybe? I am nervous. <laughs> I've said this many times already in this vlog, but I am so scared that someone is going to die. I wonder actually though whether it's not going to be like a traumatic death or whether it's just a case of the characters that we know and love are getting older. So I'm wondering whether we're going to see like the older characters like Hilo and Shay, whether we're going to see them as old people and whether they're going to die of natural causes and that's how the book is going to wrap up. At this point I am I am pretty confident that this is going to end up being five stars, but I am hoping that I can read this second half a lot quicker than I read the first half because I do want to try and finish it this week. So I am getting really close to the end of Jade Legacy. I think I'm on page 520, so less than 200 pages to go. I might actually try and finish this tonight. When I was reading it last night, I was really struggling to put it down because I got to the part where Wen and Shay were kidnapped by the uh, Barukan gangs in Shatar. I think that's how you pronounce it. We know that Wen is okay but we don't know yet whether Shay is gonna be all right and I am so anxious. <laughs> when you think about it, Fonda Lee is actually a genius <laughs> for what she did in the first book because by killing off Lan that early it showed us that she was not afraid to kill off May Major characters and so I have spent the last two books absolutely terrified that something is going to happen to the characters that I love and that wouldn't have happened if we hadn't had that in the first book. I think that's everything that I wanted to say in this update anyway but yeah I am gonna get back into this and if I have any more thoughts <laughs> as I'm reading the end then I will share them but let's just say that I am scared. How many times can I say scared in one video? A lot apparently. <laughs> I have no idea how to even begin <laughs> this update but I finished reading Jade Legacy last night and it was a five stars. We knew it was going to be a five stars especially after that ending. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I could not vlog at all towards the end of this book because I was an emotional mess. <laughs> I think it was when Hilo started talking about how he couldn't wait to see Lan and Rue again. That really, really punched me in the gut and I started crying and I couldn't stop and I'm smiling now. But I was not smiling last night. I was... the tears <laughs> were streaming down my face and I can't remember the last time a book made me feel that way. This book was just epic. It was such an emotional roller coaster and I loved it. I think this is one of my all-time favourite series now. Oh, I can't, I, I, just, I don't even know what else I can say. I guess I was kind of right in the direction that this book went in because the two clans did eventually come together in the end and then there was that betrayal with a Madashi. I think Think that things just didn't quite unfold in the way that I was expecting but I'm completely okay with that because I love how twisty this series is and how there were so many moments that just literally made my jaw drop and I thought oh my goodness I was not expecting that to happen. I wasn't expecting Rue to die in this book. Yeah of all the characters that I thought could possibly die in this book he definitely wasn't one of them but yeah I guess Yes, that does bring me to the end of this reading vlog and it feels so weird to say that because I have been filming this vlog for over a month. It took me 17 days to finish Jade War and then another 17 days to finish Jade Legacy. So I don't really know what to do with myself now because my life for the past month has been reading these books and I think I need to take a break from reading fantasy for a while because nothing is going to be able to compare to this, let's be honest. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you did make it this far, let me know in the comments any of your thoughts and feelings on this series let me know what you thought of Jade Legacy and especially that ending and let me know if it made you cry like it made me cry <laughs> but yeah don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time bye